Hello, my name is Rafiat and you're welcome to my YouTube channel. And the first request I have is please make sure you watch this video to the end because I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about making the perfect pepper soup spice. Not only are we going to make pepper soup spice in this video, we are also going to identify each spice we need to make it as well as make a yummy pot of pepper soup using the already made spice so let's do this together of course the first thing to do is to identify our spices and the first one has to be uziza seeds i love this one so much they are also called ashanti pepper sorisa and for me i can't miss them in my pepper soup spice and hey they are not the same thing with what you know as black pepper you can simply differentiate them with the presence of tails in uziza seeds and tails are not found in black pepper. Next we have Uda, what is also known as African Negro pepper or grains of selim. The bark is quite bitter so when you're using them be careful or simply use just the seeds that you can find within them. These are called buffalo and they are quite flavorful. So they have an outer covering which is quite tough and when you break open you're going to find this round spice. Don't worry everything will be in the description box and you'll find more details there. Next we have Ehuru or Ehu. They are also called Calabash Nutmeg and they are so flavorful, a little goes a long way. The first thing you have to do before using them is to roast them using a pan or open fire. Roast them for about 10 minutes and then you're going to be left with something that looks just like this. Once you're done with that, go ahead and peel them open to reveal the actual content which is what we're going to use for this recipe. This is what they look like once you take out the back. This one is so cool. They are called Abi seeds or Gansa. I hope I pronounced that right. They are good for thickening soups. And hey, very important what I'm about to say now. When you want your pepper soup spice not to cake easily or not to clump together easily, make sure you have um, you add a generous quantity of Abi seeds to your pepper soup spice. Very important. These are called emilo or umilo. They have an outer covering which is tough and you have to break them open to reveal what is inside and that is what is useful for us in this recipe. And next we have these shiny seeds. They are called airy seeds or oriyama. Funny enough, some traders refer to them as shine shine. I mean they are shiny so that explains it. They are really flavorful and I recommend that you add them to your spice. We have lemongrass. Lemongrass is optional but I like to add them to my pepper soup spice because why not? They are so flavorful. Has really really nice flavor so I recommend it. And finally we have this popular guy called Falconer Spice, Aridan, some people also call it Uyayak, Nchoncho or Prekese, different names. It's very popular and it contains tannins and it's highly fragrant. It's hard to touch but has really soft seeds inside. You can use them in whole or break them up to reveal the seeds inside. And for pepper soup spice, I prefer to use the seeds. Now that we're done identifying all the spices, which you're going to find more details in the box below. The next step is to toast these spices. What this does is that it enhances the aroma of the spices by releasing the oils in them. Um, but there's a downside to to um, toasting your spices before blending. What it does is that it's going to release the oils fine, which will make them not last so long. So if you have plans of keeping your spices for a very long time, say more than two months, no, there is really no need to toast them but if you're like me and you get to use up your spices within one to two months then i recommend that you toast them so that the flavor from them will like fill the whole house at this point everywhere was so fragrant so yeah toast them when you're not storing for so long then don't toast them if you want to store for a very long time once you're done toasting, transfer everything to a grinder. I recommend that you do this in batches in order not to overwork or overfill your grinder. Don't forget the details like the measurements, order names, uses of every spice used in making this pepper soup spice, they'll all be in the box below. So do check that out. Once you're done grinding, you should be left with something like this. So flavorful, looks so lush, so rich, one tablespoon goes a long way trust me to store this pepper soup spice what i usually do is write the name on a sticker and paste on an airtight jar pour the pepper soup spice in it and then 
I can store it. Usually I try to use my spice within one to two months because I've noticed that using it outside the two months target I give myself, uh, the flavor reduces naturally. Okay, no matter how tight the jar is, the flavor will naturally reduce. So what I do is to make the quantity that I know that I will be able to exhaust within one to two months and then once it's past two months, I can't use it again because the flavor isn't as strong as it was when it was still fresh. It's just nature. So I recommend that you make the quantity that you're going to finish within one to two months. And remember, we toasted the spices before blending, which is even going to make the flavor um, diminish a lot faster than when you didn't toast them. Like I said, that's a very important tip, especially if you're going to use this spice recipe for business purposes. There's no need toasting if you know that you're going to be storing for a very long period of time. So now I just want to quickly show you how I make pepper soup using the pepper soup spice we just made. I added some already washed goat's meat into a pot, then I added seasoning powder and some salt. I mix this all up so that they can get well incorporated into the goat's meat. Next, I cover the pot and I'm going to allow it to simmer for about 5 minutes. What this does is that it's going to allow the goat's meat release its own natural juice and you can also do this with other kinds of meat. Now to the cool part, I added half tablespoon of the pepper soup spice and it went a long way. Then I added some already blended pepper, some crayfish and some water. The water should be slightly above the level of the meat and it's just enough to cook the meat. I covered the pot and I cooked for another 25 minutes on medium heat. This pepper soup turned out so delicious and believe me the secret is in the pepper soup spice we just made. Finally I added some fresh scent leaves and hey this is how to make both pepper soup spice and pepper soup itself in very easy steps. Thank you so much for coming this far please don't forget to like drop a comment and subscribe to my youtube channel it means a lot to me bye and see you next time